Mm. This is not working. Can we just sing too out loud? Um, you know, I don't know why we can't. Um, I haven't received any information about that. There we go. I mean, with or without a mask, I figured I can't stop you. So. How was your week? Good. Share on page, other page, live on Facebook now.
Good evening, and welcome to this worship service of MCC Sacred Journey. I'm Pastor Joan Sanyuk, and I'm delighted to have all of you with us here tonight, whether it's in person or on Facebook. Uh, especially to those of you who are on Facebook, if you would give us a like or a love or uh, there we go. To those of you who are on Facebook, now you can see me. I hope you'll give us a like or love or some other comment and let us know that you're here with us tonight. We're gathered here tonight knowing that God's presence is with us always. And if God is present with each one of us, then we can't be far apart from each other. So as one people gathered in God's presence, let us affirm that we're at peace with one another. May God's peace be with you. And would you please share with one another or with whoever you might be with a sign of God's peace. Our opening praise song this evening is God is here. And I invite us to Rise as we're able in body, mind, and or spirit, and um, join in singing. I don't know what the rules are now for congregational singing, now that we're in a low-risk area. So um, whatever the spirit leads you to, I'm sure we'll be fine. Please join in singing. sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Come and lay down the burdens you have carried. For in Seated. 
Our Lent journey through the dark wood invites us to the gift of emptiness tonight. Many of us sometimes feel empty inside and we fear that there's nothing there of worth. But what if we let go of our obsession with worthiness and released into the idea that if we want to be filled, if we want to find God, getting empty is the best way. God will find us. In our journey this Lent toward the cross, we know even Jesus felt empty despair. And it was at this moment that God's possibility of life beyond that pain was revealed. love enter our lives and open us to the gifts residing deep within the holy darkness of our lives help us to empty ourselves with every breath make room in us so that you might take up residence in the very marrow of your our bones in your many names we pray amen invite Sherilyn to come and read tonight's scriptures. Our first reading is from Mark 15. 22 through 38. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means skull place. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he didn't take it. Mm -hmm. 
They crucified him. They divided up his clothes, drawing lots for them to decide who would take what. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The notice of the formal charge against him was written, the king of the Jews. They crucified two outlaws with him, one on his right, one on his left. People walking by insulted him, shaking their heads, saying, ha, so you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, were you? Save yourself and come down from that cross. In the same way, the chief priests were making fun of him among themselves together with the legal experts. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross. Then we'll see and believe. Even those who had been crucified with Jesus insulted him. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. At three, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you left me? After hearing him, some others standing there said, look, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a pole. He offered it to Jesus a drink saying, let's see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus let out a loud cry and died. The curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing Jesus saw how he had died, he said, this man was certainly God's son. Our second reading is Luke 17, verse 33. Jesus said, whoever tries to preserve their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life will preserve it. And our contemporary reading comes from A Hidden Wholeness by Parker Palmer. Like a wild animal, Soul is tough, resilient, resourceful, savvy, and self-sufficient. It knows how to survive in hard places. I learned about these qualities during my bouts with depression. In that deadly darkness, the faculties I had always depended on collapsed. My intellect was useless. My emotions were dead. My will was impotent. My ego was shattered. But from time to time, deep in the thickets of my inner wilderness, I could sense the presence of something that knew how to stay alive even when the rest of me wanted to die. That something was my tough, and tenacious soul. Amen. Thank you. I want to thank Sherilyn for finding the gas gauge for running on empty. How many of you have literally done that? Run on empty and run out of gas? 
Yeah. If, if you have never done that, congratulations. You are wiser than I am. When, especially in the days before cell phones, you know, it, that running out of gas means you stop everything, you interrupt your plans, and there's one thing you have to do, get gas into your vehicle, right? Sometimes an emergency calls us to take care of the essentials. So we have three interesting readings tonight. One, one contemporary reading, two pieces from scripture. And the piece from scripture, the first one that Sherilyn read, is one that we don't normally hear this far away from Easter, right? We save it for Good Friday usually. But it is a story that works for this week. It's the story of Jesus' despair as he's dying, asking, where is Abba God? Where is his heavenly father? Where is the creator, the holy one, the one who sent Jesus? As Jesus is in pain. We hear that story and we hear Parker Palmer's 20th, 21st century story of finding the power to go on living when he was in the depths of depression. And if you don't know anything about that writer, let me just tell you, he's, he's well known by those who know him well. Um, he's a Quaker spiritual teacher. Um, I can't say minister because Quakers don't have ministers, but he's a spiritual teacher with that kind of regard, um, written many books about God and about spirituality. And so it's a relief to me to hear that even he dealt with depression and found a spiritual lesson in it. In between those two stories, we get the line from Luke, one of Jesus' sayings that makes no sense, if you think about it literally. Anyone who wants to save their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life will save it or whoever loses their life will find it. What the heck does that mean? We pray with me, please. Holy One, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the spring, which is surely arriving, and for the opportunity to gather here together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, and together might we discover your word and your wisdom for us right here and right now. Amen. Here's the bottom line. When our spirits are running on empty, we come back to the essentials. When we find and when we admit that we are powerless in a situation, God meets us there. I think that's Jesus' message for us tonight. This morning I went to um, another talk. I, I might have mentioned this last week. I went to another talk over at Trinity Presbyterian by one of my former seminary professors, Reverend Dr. Carter Hayward. And she's working on a new book about the deadly sins of white Christian nationalism. So what, what she talked about this morning was the deadly sins are sins that are part of our culture and all of us have to watch out for, whether or not we consider ourselves to be white Christian nationalists. And the very first one that, that um, Carter pointed out was the sin of omnipotence. Omnipotence. If you ever had to learn the Baltimore Catechism, you know that that omnipotent means that God can do everything. Which reminds me of the George Carlin line, hey, sister, 
can God make a rock so big that he can't lift it? Ha, 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 ha. There, there is an interesting question about whether or not God really can do everything. Um, just as an aside, that was, that's been seriously debated since about 1944. As people looked at, Christian theologians looked at the Holocaust, Christian and Jewish theologians especially, considered the mass murder that took place during the Second World War. Six million Jews, countless others, murdered for no reason except that they weren't white and Aryan and German enough, or simply that they were political enemies of Hitler. And they looked at the Holocaust, how all these Jews were just murdered, and said, how can a loving God allow this to happen? Can God be all powerful and all loving, both at the same time? If God is all loving, why didn't God stop this? If God is all if God is all powerful and did not stop this, how can God be all loving? And that's an interesting tension. Sometimes we think that we can do everything. All right. I didn't ask for a show of hands, but hey, thanks for piping up. <laughs> Sometimes we think we can do everything. Amen. We think we can do everything ourselves, or we think that there's no struggle that can come up that we can't handle, at least by ourselves. Right? There's, I'm thinking about that commercial with the, I forget what it's a commercial for. Uh, I guess it's commercial for a ther uh, mental health service where there's a guy in the gym who's trying to press, who's trying to lift weights and, and he groans and drops the weight back and somebody comes over and says, hey, do you want, you want a hand with that? He's like, nah, 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 nah. You don't know about shame in my family. If I can't do it myself, you know, I've, I've got to do it myself. And we can't do everything ourselves. Amen. That's why we're here in church. Amen. We have church, not just because we need to connect with God, but because we need to connect with each other. We keep each other honest, if nothing else. Right? Spiritual renewal begins when we admit that we are not all powerful. Amen. In the 12 steps, the second step is to admit that we're powerless over addiction. And then the next step is to ask for help, for the help of a higher power. Right. It is not just 12 step spirituality that begins with admitting that we are powerless. There are whole schools of Christian spirituality and spiritual development that begin by inviting the pilgrim to meditate on their sins, to meditate on their faults, to meditate on the ways in which we disappoint God. And then when everything that we count on, everything we think about ourselves that's good gets pulled out and leaving us as a mess, then we invite God in and start building again. Okay. That's, there is a great deal of wisdom in that admitting that we are not all powerful. Parker Palmer had one of those kind of experiences when he was dealing with depression. He said, I lost the use of my intellect, of my emotions, of my will, of my ego. And in spite of depression, he found his soul. There's something in Christian spirituality that talks about emptiness as something to be desired in, in this sense. 
we empty ourselves of attachments to our reputation, attachments to stuff, at least in prayer, empty our brain of all other thoughts. If you've ever tried this, you know it's easier said than done. Let our brain be empty of other thoughts and just focus on God. And wait to hear what God says. Wait to see what God does in that emptiness. Lent in many cultures is an occasion for fasting. Um, some of you may have grown up doing that or been part of churches that did that. And part of the point of fasting is to remind ourselves of the difference between the things we want and the things we need, the things we're used to and the things that are necessary. We empty those distractions from our lives so that we can focus on God even better. And when we let go of all the things that constitute our life, only our soul in our body self remains. So what is my life? If you think about it, what, what, what is your life? What is your life for tomorrow? If you're still working, it may mean go to a job. Um, it may mean taking care of somebody else. It may mean um, getting up and walking a dog. All of these things that constitute our life are part of who we are, but they're not the essential, right? I'm more than just somebody who feeds the cat. On the, on, the occasion, on the occasions when I do feed the cat, because that's not normally my job. I am more than just the person who gives the cat her treats when I get out of bed in the morning, right? I am more than the Zoom meeting I have at one o'clock, right? I am more than that. That doesn't define me. But too often we let it define us, amen. If I can't do this anymore, if I can't, zoom anymore if i can't meet with other people anymore who am i so many of us when we face retirement face that challenge if i can't work this job anymore especially if we've worked the same job for 30 or 40 years if i can't do this job anymore who am i sometimes we forget that we're more than just our job we're more than just our family. Not that that family isn't important. We're more than just the things that we do. When we let go of investing our ego, investing our sense of self-worth in those things, and we find that God is there. Jesus on the cross took his own advice as painful as it was. He lost his life. He gave up his life. He could have continued preaching and healing, but his destiny was to go to Jerusalem and be betrayed and to die. And when he was in the middle of doing that, he didn't like it very much. He cried out to God in agony. And when he lost that life for a greater purpose, God met him there. God received him. God raised him from the dead. And Jesus had an even more amazing life that continues to this day, amen? The risen Christ is with us still. So my suggestion for this week is to remember when we're in one of those spaces 
where we find we're powerless or when we're, if we're depressed, if we're at a low point where nothing seems worthwhile, to let go of feeling worthless, to let go of the pride that says I should be able to handle this myself, to let go of that pride and let God come back into our lives in a new way and restore our lives to us. When our spirits are running on empty, we come back to the essentials. And when we find and admit that we are powerless, God meets us there. So for our response this week, I invite us to take some time to reflect on the things that fill us, the things that fill our thoughts, the things that fill our feelings, things like ego, things like the fear of being unloved, things like the worry of not measuring up, how these things need to be emptied so that we might live. So Ginny is going to, in a minute, pass around some index cards and writing implements. And I'm gonna put some music on, you can sing along with it or not. Um, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna run the words on the screen just in case, but you can listen or you can sing, whatever. I'm just gonna listen. Write down something in your life that needs to die in order that you can live more fully. And when you're ready, there is an icon of Christ on the cross here. And I invite you to bring it forward and put it in the box. Give it back to God. And leave it there.
at this point in our service, we have a chance to be generous as God is generous. If you'd like to make an offering to MCC Sacred Journey, there's an offering basket in the back of the church. Uh, for those of you who are online, you can find information about how to make a paper and pencil donation or a link to find, make an electronic donation there. And I also want to remind ourselves or remind us all that um, if you're in the US, um, we have a relief fund. MCC has a relief fund for Ukrainian refugees uh, of the LGBTQ communities. And um, I know that this is a cause that is worthwhile and it's been vetted. Um, and so there's a, real, a link here, uh, weblink.donorperfect.com forward slash MCC disaster relief. And uh, that'll, that'll take a donation by credit card or debit card. Let's pray. Holy one, we know that your grace and your unconditional love are gifts freely given to us. We know there is no obligation to give you anything in return. Although being well-bred, we know that a relationship is a two-way street. And so we give you what we can. We know that you cheerfully accept any gift that we make that comes from our hearts. Holy One, pray, we pray that you guide our church to use all the gifts that we bring, whether the monetary or something else, to use these gifts to make a way for your love to spread throughout our world. Amen.
is an opportunity for us to bring our concerns and our joys <clears throat> before God. If you're online and you have a want to make a private prayer request for our prayer team, please text it to the church phone number. That's area code 828-693-9110 again, area code 828-693-110. We will be honored to pray with you and for you um, um, with our prayer team. That is not where I wanted to be. Feel free to sing or sing the echo. Let us bring our prayers. First of all, our gratitudes. In all of the troubles of the world, still there is joy. In all that is death or destruction, there is still new life. God, we give you thanks for the beauty that persists in the world. We give you thanks for people who've escaped the war. We give you thanks for babies who were born in the midst of all this turmoil. Are there other things for which we wish, wish to give thanks? God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. There are many people who are walking the dark woods for various reasons. Let us lift up names of those who need our prayers. People of Ukraine. Judy. Judy.
God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And there are many places in this world where fear reigns. And let us lift up names or places in this world that need our prayers. Ukraine. Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Moldova, Belarus. Florida. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together, let us pray as Jesus taught us, using the words that are on the screen or whatever words work best for you. Our, our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your dominion come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the dominion and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Here at MCC Sacred Journey, as in all metropolitan community churches, we celebrate an open communion. What that means is when we serve communion, we are not the bouncers, we are the waitrons. This is Jesus' table, and we're honored to serve this table for him. We remember every week that the night before he died, Jesus took bread from the table. He gave God thanks for it and blessed it. He broke it, and he shared it with his friends, saying, Take and eat all of you, my life given for you. And after the supper, he took the cup from the table, the cup of Elijah, the cup anticipating Elijah's return. He gave God thanks for it and blessed it and shared it with them saying, take and drink all of you. This is my love poured out for you so that all might be forgiven. And whenever you do this, he said, do it in remembrance of me. Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, we thank you for Jesus and for this supper, and we pray that our sharing of these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine might become for us in whatever way we understand it. Your presence, our communion with the living Christ, our being fed at your welcome table, in Jesus' name. And in all your many names, we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite uh, uh, Ginny to come forward now and pass out the individual cups. We're not completely free from COVID yet. I'm going to invite you to open up the 
little part that has the wafer in it. If you're at home and you have bread and uh, fruit of the vine or something else, uh, I invite you to consume it with us. And the bigger part of the cup we use here has grape juice in it, not wine in respect for those who are in recovery. So let us share. The bread of heaven. And let us together share the cup of freedom. Thank you, Jenny. I'm going to say a prayer for all of us, and if anyone has individual prayers that they'd like, I'm going to put some music on, and you can come up, come up and let me know if you'd like something. I'd like me to pray with you about something specific. Holy One, we thank you that Jesus is with us still, and I pray for each person here that they'll know that their soul is always alive within them, even at times when it may not feel that way. And I pray that each of us will leave here with that wild soul, keeping us encouraged, keeping us searching for union with you in every moment. Help us to know how very much you love us. Help us to remember that always. Amen.
For those of you who are not familiar with the Taizé community, it's an ecumenical Christian community that was formed after the Second World War, when Christians from various countries, even though they could not take communion with each other because of the rules of their churches, decided that people of all nations, especially all the nations of Europe, needed to pray together and praise God together and seek peace together. And the lyric that the choir was chanting just now is in French, and the English translation is, even darkness is not darkness with you. The night is as bright as the day. And so may it be. Our closing, my closing song is, Open My Eyes That I May See. I invite you again to rise as you're able in body, mind, and or spirit, and join in singing however you can. And definitely, if you're at home, you have no excuse for not singing as loud as you want to. Let's join in singing. As we go forth, know that you have a place in this world, a place where everything comes together in your body and you disappear into a seamless whole. Get over whatever shortcomings afflict you and inhabit this world with your fullest self. May the spirit of the living God made known to us most fully within life's dark wood Go before you to show you the way. 
go above you to watch over you, go behind you to push you into places you may not necessarily go yourself. Go beneath you to uphold and uplift you and go beside you to be your strong and constant companion. And dwell within you to remind you that you are surely not alone and that you are loved, loved beyond your wildest imagination. And may the fire of God's blessing, the one who is creator, Christ, spirit, and more names than we can imagine. May that blessing burn brightly upon you and within you now and always. Amen. There's a path and it leads us out together to the wood where the darkness hovers still we are sent and the spirit goes before us god says go be my presence in the world amen this evening thank you again for being with us this evening um, I meant to say a few words about the icon that's uh, on the communion table in front of me. It is a small uh, picture of uh, a huge painting that sits in the sanctuary where MCC Boston worships. And uh, the title of the painting is Icon Through the Ages, and people either love it or hate it. What I love about it is it's got at least four layers of different icons of Christ, from Jesus on the cross, to Jesus in his dead mother's arms, to Jesus risen in glory and ruling the world. So I hope you take a look at that before you go. This week, we have uh, meetings on Tuesday, Tuesday Board of Directors, you can be seated, Tuesday Board of Directors at 6.30, um, Thursday Bible study at 10.30 in the morning, and Saturday, March 19th, we're going to go to dinner at Champa, 437 North Main Street in Hendersonville. Um, a couple of folks who are going to be moving are going to make it a point to be there. And so this would be a nice opportunity for us to have dinner together before they make that move. Um, and I will let you read the rest of the announcements. God bless you. Have a great week.